We're going to talk a little bit today about keeping your place at the table of influence if you're a Christian involved in business. What does that mean? Well, we'll get into that. What would your advice be to a couple of Christian young people in business if you had an opportunity to tell them what they should do? The first is a leasing agent who's been given the invitation by a partner to be part of a lucrative deal leasing an entire building in downtown LA. Lots of money can be made from this, great opportunity for this young person to move up in the company. But then he or she finds out that the occupant of that building is going to be one of the largest pornographers in the world. Should that person turn down the opportunity? Should they regard it as an opportunity to keep a place at the table of influence? Should they walk away? What would you tell them to do? Or if a young uh, Christian is involved in acting in Hollywood, wants to get involved in the business side of Hollywood to be salt and light in that arena of business, and begins as an actor, and in his very first big break, he gets a part in an ongoing sitcom that's a nationally televised sitcom where he'll play the role of somebody with whom the main female character basically has sex. That's his role. And she describes him in some vulgar ways in multiple episodes. Now, does he turn down that role? Or does he recognize it as a chance to become influential in Hollywood and accordingly he should accept? Would you advise them to withdraw from these opportunities? And if so, why? Why would you do that? And we'll, we'll get back to these in a moment. Let's begin with another question. If you're involved in business, did you ever feel like you were a second-class citizen and a second-class Christian? That what your role in business was was to raise money and fund real ministry, which is done by pastors and perhaps missions organizations. Did you ever wish that your role could be making that kind of contribution that those sorts of people make? I did for a long time. I held that view for a long time. Well, I have good news for you. That view is incorrect. You are all in full-time ministry when you're on the job. And the whole time you're on the job. All of us are. The calling you have from God to the business world is no less to God than the calling of a pastor or a missionary. You may have heard the idea that uh, the Greek word for ministry merely means servant or service. And in business, we are providing service services to the people that we have as clients. If you're a lawyer like I am, services that are legal in nature, if you sell products, products that enhance life, that make life better, all these things are ministry. Um, so we're all in full-time ministry because all of us are in full-time service to others. Business as ministry is in fact the signature of the Kroll School of Business here at Biola University. Colossians 3.23 is written in our lobby when it basically says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that it is the Lord Christ you are serving. You're serving Christ in business as you serve your clients well. We would encourage you to be involved in a wide array of businesses and to view yourself as ministers in these different businesses. Engage the culture Find a place at the table of influence and keep it where you can be much needed salt and light in darkness. This engagement model, we would suggest you should be your default position. We're not encouraging you to be involved in businesses that are inherently evil. However, there are very few of those when you think about it. Organized crime would be one. Uh, the, the very purpose of the business is evil. Most businesses have a perfectly legal, perfectly valid business that they do, products they sell, services they provide, but they do have issues arise within them that reflect the fallen nature of society in which we all have to live and function. We'd suggest the proper perspective should be to engage the culture and allow yourselves to be forces for change. You inevitably will encounter ethical dilemmas in your workplaces. There's nothing you're going to be able to do to avoid that. It's not surprising in a fallen world. When you do, please don't let your first thought be to withdraw and to resign or to leave, but instead seek to resolve those dilemmas courageously. The Bible has several examples of that. One is Rahab in Joshua 2, where we learn that she has two spies sent by Joshua. The king of Jericho sends her a message asking her to bring them out. She lies and says that they'd already left. Well, she faced an ethical dilemma. Should she value truth-telling and tell the truth that they really were there? Or should she value innocent life and protect them? She had to choose between those two, and she could not do both. 
So she made a choice. Pharaoh's daughter in Exodus 2, same kind of situation. When she discovered the baby Moses in a papyrus basket on the bank of the Nile, she had the value of truth-telling to tell her father that there's a Hebrew baby here, but she also had the value colliding with that, which was the value of protecting innocent life. Like Rahab, she had to choose and couldn't have it both ways. Neither of these women withdrew from the dilemma they faced, but both of them courageously faced that dilemma. In Hebrews 11, Rahab is actually listed as one of the faith champions in that chapter. So it indicates that God expects us to make those courageous choices in our business lives and will consider it morally right when we do so. Because of that, we would suggest don't withdraw and step away in the hope that someone else will resolve that for you. Instead, uh, act, engage. Jesus himself did that. His model was one of engaging culture, not standing back from it. You don't see Jesus on the sidelines waggling a finger and saying, you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. He engaged with culture, sometimes paid a price in public opinion because of it. He actually ate with tax gatherers and was criticized for that. He spoke to the Samaritan woman at the well. Uh, Jewish people didn't do that. Spoke with the woman caught in adultery is another example, whereas most people would not have done that. In doing so, he didn't become complicit in their sin, and you don't have to be complicit in sin either, but engaging the culture, that active engagement model, was definitely modeled by Jesus himself. If that engagement model is correct, then Christians, we believe, have a responsibility to participate in the transformation of the business world. Author Steve Brin writes this, we should thank God when we see a person of faith taking tough jobs in the marketplace, and we should hope for their courage, wisdom, and perseverance, rather than thinking the worst and attacking like jackals. Bryn goes on to make the point that Christians should not leave the business world because of moral danger. Instead, he said, Christians need to be in the forefront of business because these moral tensions exist. Maybe that means becoming involved in the business side of Hollywood through a role that might be a little questionable. Maybe that involves taking that leasing agent opportunity in the hope that you can bring salt and light into the life of a person who will likely never, never darken the door of a church. You may be the only representative of Christ those people ever see. Don't lose sight of that fact. Uh, there are times when we would suggest that uh, you should stay or walk away. So don't hear me as advocating never leave that position of influence. And we've come up with five factors. Scott Ray and I have come up with this list as we've taught organizational ethics over the years. It's a work in progress, but here's what we have so far. First, is the business intrinsically evil or beyond redemption? That would militate in favor of getting out pretty quickly. That would be organized crime, things of that nature. Second, does remaining in the business seriously injure the ability of coworkers and others to take your faith seriously? For the leasing agent and for the actor, that's a very real question, and they would need to deal with that. Uh, third, does re remaining in the business put you in legal jeopardy? Are you being asked to do something that actually violates the law? Fourth, if you choose to stay, realistically, how influential are you going to be? We would suggest an expansive view of that. Don't be too narrow and don't run yourself down in terms of your possibilities of doing that. And lastly, is remaining in the business corrosive to your soul? By that, we mean for every person, there may be a unique uh, kind of business that for reasons of their own, they feel they simply cannot be involved with. I know a gentleman who, for instance, uh, in advertising, who will not take on a tobacco company client because his father died of cancer when he was a young man. That is some, but he would not say, none of the rest of you in advertising should take that on either. He would recognize that as something individually corrosive to his own soul. So those five factors might indicate stay out or get out. But in closing, I would urge you, this is no time to be timid, brothers and sisters in Christ. The world of business is in great need of courageous believers who are willing to engage culture and bring salt and light to their workplaces when the inevitable ethical challenges come. We would urge you, don't let your first thoughts be to run. Instead, 
unless there are compelling and overarching reasons not to do so, have your default position be to keep a place at the table of influence and be used by God as an instrument for change. Uh, in this way, Christians can be meaningfully involved in a transformation of the business world, a world that desperately needs you and the unique gifts and talents that you alone bring.